In this video, I'm going to tell you how to frame a strategic disagreement you're having with someone. And I'm going to do it using the disagreement between Elizabeth and Charlotte from chapter six of Pride and Prejudice. Now, when you first learn game theory, usually you're given these payoff matrices with the numbers all filled out. But if you want to use game theory in the real world, you have to come up with those numbers from scratch. And that's what this video is about. That's what I'm going to show you how to do. This video is about strategic disagreements. So what do I mean by that? And there are lots of real world strategic disagreements that could match this process. For example, if you have two co-founders of a company, they might disagree about the strategies to use against competitors. Or if you have two policymakers, they might disagree about the optimal strategy against another country that is perhaps trying to invade or perhaps trying to set some kind of policy. So really, this is about two people who are looking at a situation between two players, in which case, what about chapter six of Pride and Prejudice? And I promise in this video not to spoil anything beyond chapter six. So the basic nature of the disagreement is that Charlotte says a woman should exaggerate her interest in a man in order to catch him. And Elizabeth is like, no way, that's slimy, you would never do that, you're not being serious. And this disagreement happens when they're looking at the situation of Jane, who is Elizabeth's sister. Jane is interested in Mr. Bingley, and Elizabeth can tell that. However, Jane's disposition has a uniform cheerfulness of manner. And so it's very likely that most people will not perceive Jane's interest in Mr. Bingley. But everybody can tell that Mr. Bingley is interested in Jane. And that's what they're looking at. And Charlotte is basically saying she needs to exaggerate her interest in him or else he may not figure out that she likes him. In fact, Charlotte says nine times out of 10, a woman had better show more affection than she feels. But Elizabeth says if a woman is partial to a man, he must find it out. So that's the general context of their argument. This disagreement is actually going to play out in the lives of all three women in the book, Jane, Elizabeth, and Charlotte. So if you've thought about this dilemma and the game theory of it, it will make reading this book way more interesting. One more thing before we get started. I'm going to assume that you know how to solve for Nash equilibrium. And I'm also going to assume that you know how to solve a game tree using backwards induction. If you don't, I'll put some links below to videos that explain that. Step one is going to be to set up these games. And that means that we need to identify who is player one and who is player two. And of course, these map over here onto this sequential moves game. And we're going to have to identify strategies for each player. When you're choosing who gets to be player one and who is player two, you want to make sure to match it up to the sequential moves game. Because over here, it doesn't really matter uh, which, which you put as player one and player two, but here it does. And the other thing I want to point out about sequential versus simultaneous moves games is that sometimes it's actually not as clear cut as you might think. I'm going to let the woman be player one, the man be player two, and I'll explain why in a second. Now the strategies that I think best match the situation are exaggerate for the woman and don't exaggerate. That's what they're disagreeing about. The strategies for the man are going to be pursue and not pursue. Pursue and don't pursue, that is. And I want to map those strategies over here in a way that leads these letters to match up. Now I'm going to check that A and B is associated with exaggerate and pursue in this game tree and also over here, exaggerate pursue. And also that A belongs to player one over here and A belongs to player one over here. And check all of the letters in these tables to make sure that's true. Okay, now why is it necessary to put the woman as player one? And this has to do with the sequential moves game because if we're envisioning the situation as one person moving first and the other moving second, it's going to be the woman exaggerates her interest first and then the man pursues second. 
However, in this situation, it's actually not so clear cut. So what do we mean by pursuing? Does that mean asking her to marry him? Or does that mean sort of being intentional about seeking her out at parties, about developing a friendship with her sisters, about inviting her over to dinner? All that kind of stuff is, is a little bit more subtle and it happens sort of on an ongoing basis rather than see what she does and respond. So because of that, there's actually an argument that the simultaneous moves decision kind of makes sense. In this case, the man and the woman are both in the neighborhood and they both have to decide what is my general disposition toward this person going to be. Is she generally going to be exaggerating her interest? And is he generally going to be pursuing her on average? So either situation could work and that's why I'm setting up both. Now we know that we have two different perspectives on this game. So I'm going to set up a game theory matrix for both people, for Elizabeth and Charlotte. And I decided to color code it so that it was easy for you to see what are player one's payoffs and what are player two's payoffs. The next step is going to be to set up a cost benefit table from the man and the woman's perspective. And also to set up a place where you're accounting for the disagreement and the source of disagreement between the two. Now, we're probably going to fill this out more as we go along with the analysis, but having those in place will sort of help us get our ideas on paper so that we're considering those ideas when we set up the payoffs. So I generally like to set up benefit cost tables like this. Now, I will say with game theory, you actually don't need both benefits and costs. Like it could be possible to only have benefits and no costs. That will not happen in this case, but, but in any case, you want to set up the benefit and cost table from both players' perspectives. And I would like to come up with a list down here of the sources of disagreement between Elizabeth and Charlotte. And you could imagine Elizabeth and Charlotte brainstorming these together. So what's the benefit of exaggerating? And I just put down the first benefit and cost that came to mind. Charlotte's arguing that uh, exaggerating your interest is going to increase your likelihood of marriage. Elizabeth is arguing essentially that uh, exaggerating your interest, the cost of that is the dishonesty. And then you come up with something for the man's table. So I just put down if the man pursues, he increases his chances of having a good marriage. However, the cost of pursuing is that he increases his likelihood of rejection. And for now, I'm just going to say the source of disagreement between Elizabeth and Charlotte has to do with the emphasis on dishonesty. How bad is it to exaggerate? Elizabeth seems to think that exaggerating is kind of slimy, but there's also this argument that actually if you are interested in a man, exaggerating that interest is more like just communicating clearly your interest. And in some ways, you could also argue that the reason she might not exaggerate is out of pride. Um, if you exaggerate your interest, then everybody in the town can see that you're interested and then you could be embarrassed if he doesn't pursue you or if he changes his mind or whatnot. So, I mean, the title of the book is Pride and Prejudice, but this video is about game theory, not literature. So let's go back to our game theory matrices with all of this stuff in our head. All right, the next step is going to involve coming up with an order of preference among the four payoffs for the woman. So let me set that up. And I recommend starting by figuring out which box is her favorite and which box is her least favorite. So obviously she wants to be pursued and she doesn't want to have to exaggerate. Exaggerating does have some costs associated with it. So the woman's favorite box is this one and her payoff in that box is E. That's her favorite of the four. Now her least favorite box, of course, is going to be involved not being pursued. And of course, Elizabeth really doesn't like exaggerating. So C is probably her least favorite payoff. And then you just have to decide which of the middle two payoffs is better than the other. So is the A better or is the G better? 
And this actually might be a source of disagreement between Elizabeth. Elizabeth really doesn't like exaggerating. It feels slimy to her. She loses her pride. And therefore, the G actually is probably better from Elizabeth's perspective. And of course, when we go over here and do Charlotte's payoffs, we're going to reverse these. Charlotte thinks this box, um, being pursued and exaggerating, is better than this box, G. But you could probably argue that Charlotte has the same favorite box and the same least favorite box as Elizabeth. Now this is really all you need. You can come up with any set of numbers that meets this inequality, and the game theory is going to work out. However, you'll make this more intuitive if you figure out which of these four payoffs is closest to the status quo, and let that be zero. So the status quo is basically not being pursued and not exaggerating. The GH box really is most like zero. So I've just selected some numbers where G is at zero and these numbers meet that inequality. These numbers really could have been anything. You could multiply these numbers by 10. You could pick uh, 1, 0, negative 1, and negative 2. Doesn't really matter. And the next step, of course, is to do the same exercise for the man. Now, for Charlotte, I put her favorite box up here, which is where he pursues and she's exaggerating. And I put her least favorite box as him pursuing and her not exaggerating because I think she's very worried that the man is going to fear rejection. And even though he's pursuing here, we don't know whether that pursuit is going to be successful. And now between these two, he obviously prefers the box where she exaggerates. Now over here for Elizabeth, I think Elizabeth th is kind of thinking that he doesn't want to catch a woman who is being dishonest. Like, that would not lead to a good marriage, all of that stuff. So I'm actually not going to put B as, the, as his favorite choice. I'm going to put, put F as the man's favorite box from Elizabeth's perspective. In fact, I put B as the worst possible box to end up in for the man, because if she's exaggerating and he's pursuing, he's going to discover after the marriage that she doesn't like him as much as he thought she did. So that's not great. So I just came up with these numbers based on the logic and of course I might have filled out the cost benefit tables in much greater detail to get these. I'm not going to do that here. You can do that exercise on your own. Now once again I need to put actual numbers to these inequalities and I'll do that by starting with the status quo box which is the H box. I'll assign zero to that H box and then I'll make everything else sort of fulfill these inequalities. Now I can just replace these numbers with the letters in the boxes. Let's do that. And our next step is going to be to solve for Nash equilibrium. Our Nash equilibrium in Elizabeth's game, as I've set it up, has the woman not exaggerating her interest and the man pursuing. This is perfect. This fits with Elizabeth's vision of strategy. So we're good over here. What about over here? We have a Nash equilibrium where the woman does not exaggerate and the man does not pursue. So that actually doesn't fit very well with Charlotte's arguments. As a matter of fact, um, she's arguing that the woman should exaggerate. So it's actually kind of weird that we notice that not exaggerating is a dominant strategy for the woman as I've set up these payoffs. We have a problem. That means these payoffs probably don't match her arguments very well. And I'm not going to call this a mistake because part of the process is figuring out what the payoffs should be, noticing when the logic isn't quite working, and going back and fixing that in an iterative process. So even though this doesn't work just yet, we haven't made a mistake yet, we've just gotten some logic down, and now we just need to go back and fix the game, fix the payoffs, such that the payoffs match the arguments that Charlotte is making. Okay, so the first question I have, if we're trying to fix this mistake, we've got to fix the fact that not exaggerating is a dominant strategy. That would not work with Charlotte's perspective. 
And really, I think what I would like from this matrix is for this box to be a Nash equilibrium. If this box were a Nash equilibrium, that would really match her arguments. The problem is, this is not going to be a Nash equilibrium unless the woman prefers exaggerating and being pursued more than not exaggerating and being pursued. And I cannot come up with any logic that would lead this payoff to be higher than this one, or A to be higher than E. This makes me think, I probably need to solve this problem by switching from a simultaneous moves game over to a sequential moves game. But I'm not going to do that just yet because it's still possible that this thing could work out if this is a mixed strategy game. If sometimes the woman exaggerates and sometimes she doesn't. As a matter of fact, this actually fits with what Charlotte says in the book. Charlotte says, in nine cases out of ten, a woman had better show more affection than she feels. In which case, I have to ask, is it possible to have no pure strategies Nash equilibrium over here. And I wanted to do that by changing as few payoffs as possible, given that I thought I had pretty good intuition to begin with. And I notice, if I could actually get her to switch from don't exaggerate to exaggerate for this box, that would actually do the trick. So I want to ask the question, can I come up with a scenario where if the man doesn't pursue, she prefers to have exaggerated rather than not exaggerated? And actually, I can. As a matter of fact, this is one of Charlotte's main arguments, is that if he ends up not pursuing her, she's going to regret not exaggerating. Like, she will feel like, oh, what if he would have pursued if I would have exaggerated my interest? And so if I put regret over in that table, or the possibility of regret, then we can get these payoffs to switch. Let me do that now. At this point, I also want to update my benefit cost table from the woman's perspective. What's the benefit of exaggerating? One benefit is to avoid regret. And we needed that to make our numbers work. So we're just keeping track of what are the incentives at play for the woman's payoffs. Okay, so we've achieved a situation with no pure strategies Nash equilibrium, in which case we're going to have a mixed strategies equilibrium. Now, this process is not done because this payoff matrix is not going to work until we get the woman's optimal payoff to be 90% exaggerate, 10% don't exaggerate. And that is beyond the scope of this video, although it's really fun. If you want to try to do that on your own, you can try it, but we still have the option of the sequential moves game. So what we want to do is we want to test these payoffs. If we put these payoffs at the end of this sequential moves game tree. And what we find out is that if you solve this for backwards induction, her optimal strategy is to exaggerate, his optimal strategy is to pursue, and that matches with the arguments she's making. So we're basically finished here. Now, if these didn't match, we would have to adjust our payoffs to make them match. And that adjustment process is a process where we learn stuff, just like we kind of learned what is, what is the key parts of her argument, and we learned that possibly down here, regret might be part of her, her main argument. I think that's enough for today. I hope this has given you a sense for how do you fill out the payoffs in a matrix if you're trying to model a strategic situation where you disagree with someone about the right thing to do. And I will say, if you're actually having a disagreement with someone, you are probably going to spend a lot of time over here filling out this benefit and cost table. It's probably going to have a lot of things on both sides of this because there's a lot to think about. I was just trying to keep things simple for today, but it's very helpful to also place these payoffs over in these matrices, it's really fun. I hope you get a sense for how to do this, and I hope that this whole thing encourages you to read Pride and Prejudice, because it's, it's such a good book.